a Porsche 718 GTS special exclusively for you with the Porsche 718 Boxster GTS. You can see here you can open the roof also remote with the key and later also the 718 Cayman GTS on the racetrack and this one here rather for the road driving. Everything for you on Autogefühl, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars with Thomas. Exterior, interior, driving, road and racetrack, everything you need to know about the GTS models here of the small roadsters in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! So the 718 GTS model come with a stronger lower bumper, bigger intakes, also 10 mm lower PASM Porsche Active Suspension Management, which is the sport suspension sitting a little bit lower than. Car in red is the exterior color and headlight wise you can see there are two options or basically two ways to go for the standard one is Xenon. It's equipped right here. Also has a LED daytime running light in this four dot design, but the real full LED headlights. They have the four dot design then a little bit wider. So, you know, the distance between the four dots is wider. You can see it um, there. And also the central headlight unit is not exactly round, but a little bit wider there as well. So it's hard to dif differentiate, especially from a wider distance. Only if you look in close detail or if you really look on the papers, which option is specced right there. 4 meter 38 or 14 foot 4 is the total length of the 718 Boxster or also the Cayman. The Cayman later on as I said as a racetrack special. Not only the headlights have black background, the GTS scheme in general is black as beautiful. And then we also have the rims in black, 20 inch, the massive ones here optional with the carbon ceramic brakes. You also got a GTS badge right there but that's only you know um, small wrap. I wonder if that will just go off after a while. Um, then of course the standard Cayman style is everything is wrapped tightly as we know from Porsche beautiful design and simple. The air intake for the midship engine concept soon to the engine data information also because this one has changed here with the GTS as well. Black, blue, brown, red are the colors that are available for the roof. It can be closed and opened up to a speed of 50 kilometers an hour. And you know, that comes pretty handy. And as you can see, it also goes very fast. And again, you can open and close it from the inside, but also then again from the key. And of course, most important thing about this car is the low weight, just about 1,400 kilograms together with the midship engine concept that is making that one here so agile. Also black background for the tail lights. They come with LED technology always than the black Boxster GTS badge. Since the recent facelift, so before even the GTS models came out, and you also have this connecting light strip here, 
in the rear and with the GTS models the central two pipe exhaust that also gives a special sound of course for the strong GTS models. Um, you already heard some of those, of course more to come with that even with the Cayman later. What do you think about the design scheme of the GTS models? Tell me your opinion in the comments. So with the car key from inside but also here from the outside with the key then you can either open the front hood, we'll take a look at that soon, first the rear hood, you can open that here and then the rear one is 125 liters and easy to open to access and then you can also even put a cabin trolley in here and even a backpack next to it so it's actually quite well usable for a sports car, one of the most versatile sports cars as for the luggage compartment you can really say because in the front you got another 150 liters and that one is you know a little bit harder to access because you have to release it always then and still you can fit actually a lot in here um, well that way let's see if the cabin trolley will close still yeah that works and I mean that's pretty amazing because that means that you can fit a lot of cabin trolleys next to each other in this case then maybe like this this well theoretically maybe three would even fit if you put them upright nice so we cannot really see the engine when the service is being done actually the engine is accessed from below and well so i have to talk about it without actually seeing it the base boxster and cayman come with two liter displacement 300 horsepower then the s models 2.5 liter displacement 350 horsepower and now the gts even 15 horsepower more 365 horsepower that will have an acceleration 4.1 seconds to 100 kilometers an hour or 62 miles an hour and if you compare it to the predecessor GTS generation that's 35 horsepower more so plenty of power especially considering the low weight of the vehicle and we either have a 6-speed manual or 7-speed PDK here with the Porsche dual clutch transmission equipped we will soon get to drive it So let's access the interior, the door handles flip up like this and the scheme of the GTS is all the way Alcantara, so Thomas Proof definitely. So beautiful Alcantara use on the inside of the doors here, standard with the GTS, red contrast stitches all over the place and we go here also with the steering wheel, wow I love that and it is cozy because it's not cold in winter and you also don't sweat so much on the hands in summertime. If someone would say, ah, but you know, but it gets worn out easier than, you know, a thick surface, still, you won't regret it. And, you know, if it's really that worn out at some times, you can also get a replacement after five years or whatever. I mean, it's an 80,000 euros car. <laughs> then here, the seats, those ones are the special bucket seats. So how do we start? For the Boxster or the Cayman General, there are those standard seats, which go rather straight 
hardly to see them in a review because they are the base model. Then you get optionally the sports seats. I will show you them at the moment here in another vehicle because they have more shoulder support. Still in GPS, they come with Alcantara on the inside. And then here the bucket seats, those are the optional ones, also with Alcantara on the inside. But then you cannot adjust the rear part. It's always pretty, pretty steep, so those ones are good for the racetrack. Um, of course, they have a little bit less space, but even more caged in. So again, those ones are the special racetrack seats. Usually I would just leave it with the normal sports seats, which come standard then for the GS. The base seats um, are actually just base for the base models. So let's get inside. And this is a little bit trickier than with those bucket seats here. Um, but you know, the, surprisingly, my first impression is from the bucket seats, well, they really hold you tight, especially here in the shoulder area. Um, but they are not as uncomfortable as they look, actually. So usually I would always say go with the base seats, you know, as base as possible because they leave you a little bit more space and probably will be more on the road than on the racetrack. But ask me again at the conclusion of our review um, about the you know, long-term comfort of those seats because that I'll also soon test a little bit more. Again, great with the steering wheel. This one here is also um, the one without any stuff on it. So you just control with the, um, with the columns behind the steering wheel that in the front everything is remained clear. The seat here, I can just move forward and backward, pretty easy. Um, for those guys who tend to drive in a laying back position, that's not possible here. And the steering wheel can be adjusted manually in this case, it's a standard one, but it goes so smoothly, so that's really a nice one. Good quality, of course, great interior build quality as we know from Porsche, but that's of course what we expect at this price point as well. By the way, next to the lower door sill, those ones are the buttons where you can open the trunks from the inside, right here, front and back. So the interior overview, again, as the exterior, everything is wrapped tightly. Since the recent facelift, you also have more prominent air outtakes here, those vents. Sports Chrono package with the analog watch comes with standard with the GTS pack. Then you, again, the steering wheel, very compact shape, also with those design scheme from this, uh, from, the, um, uh, from the 918 Spider. Again, just the columns here to, for example, control the instruments, zoom more details to the instruments, all analog in the middle, and then digital, just the right one. The new infotainment screen, standard also, very well integrated, also with touch, and um, Apple CarPlay is also available, soon more details to that. The climate control is still manual in the lower part here for the temperature and also you know, for the strength of the vents. It's not too easy to control with the <laughs> PDK stick here. Also that one is covered with Alcantara, by the way. 718 logo, then again red contour stitches. Here we got those carbon fiber decor elements, but you can also pick some others. Then also Alcantara here covering the glove box. It's nice again, it's rather slim, but another USB port in the glove box. That is quite important. And we got those beverage holders, cup holders right here. They flip out, out different sizes, but they tend to be a little bit wobbly um, when heavier bottles are inside. Overall, it's still a clean and sporty cockpit layout, so um, you'll immediately get used to it. It's also not too complicated, I really like that. And in the lower area, we got the controls also for the roof again, so you can also still do it from the inside for the small wing and also for the exhaust buttons. So in your line of sight, you have this drive selector where you can also go to the sport mode and sport plus. How that one will affect the driving, I will tell you when we are in the driving part. And then the instruments here with the red GTS background, very nicely done. And left side speed, also digital speed in the middle one. And then the right one is the digital screen, where you can use the um, column behind the steering wheel to go to GPS view, for example, or also to the trip. Wow, that consumption, well, it's just for one kilometer. We, with that, um, that consumption, of course, 
and then tell you also something more about the real consumption of this vehicle very soon. So here we go with the infotainment system in detail. Phone, either we have Bluetooth or then we are Apple CarPlay. You can have this app view right there then or go back to the Porsche infotainment system and um, then let's also take a look at the GPS. We also have a map hotkey right there. Um, zoom in and out quite easily so fast respon responsive times um, this update here since the facelift since the 718 renaming came i think it's a very well, well done system it's you know easy to use good overview not too much well the interior storage space are quite limited here at the inside of the doors one and two this one can be flipped out um, but you know that's also rather limited and the armor is also nicely covered in alcantara that one can be opened and then you have another usb port there for your phone and now to my favorite auto fuel car feeling discipline riding with the open top and that's of course pure auto gefühl what we have here today i have driven the base boxster base cayman the s cayman the s boxster and now the gts so i can also tell you something if you are thinking about those different models and well let's start with the suspension sometimes we have some bumps here in the road um, also some waves and for a small, real sports car, the suspension is surprisingly comfortable. So they have worked on that one also at the most recent facelift. And here, although we have the 10 millimeter lower PASM, it's actually very well done. So you have a great control of the vehicle. It's not tilting at all. But at the same time, those waves are evened out very well even some potholes well i mean it's a sports car you cannot compare it to an suv or something like that but for a sports car um also if you compare it to a let's say jaguar f type or something like that um then this one here is actually more comfortable very interesting to know that um if you compare the base model or the s or this one well it rather depends on which suspension do you really pick because the suspensions are basically available for all of those models. Wow, that was some uh, quite big wave now, but still it didn't hurt us too much. You just have to pay attention that you do not scratch uh, the floor because the gas sits relatively low. Um, so suspension-wise, it really depends on which suspension you go for. The PASM has a little bit more, you know, wider span when you have it in comfort mode, or then. You can pick the suspension here to get a little sport here, either just singularly or if you go to the sport mode, that one is still the same. If you go to sport plus mode, then the stiffer suspension is automatically activated and you have a little bit more control right here. But in general, I mean, the steering is so well done it's not too hard, however, it is stiff enough for sports car fans. Um, you know, when you're harking in and out and really, you know, circling, circling it around, then you could say, yeah, okay, it could be more comfortable, but then again, it's a sports car and then people expect it to be a little bit more stiffer, a little bit more natural, and that's what they've really achieved here. Especially great grip with the Alcantara steering wheel, and no matter what, some other YouTube vloggers would say Alcantara is a great material to use in the car. That's my two cents from the experience I had with it and I'm still having at the moment. So again, this is the pure slalom vehicle. It's so effortless and so much fun to do it here. And due to the bucket seats, which have even more shoulder support, you are really kept very tightly. And for the first impression also, there are some bucket seats which immediately cause me back pain, but those ones do not. And 
you know, that's, that's quite promising already. Ask me later again at the finish of this drive. But see here again how well the car is transporting my commands. The Ford Fiesta makes room <laughs> freely now, or voluntarily. And in the normal driving mode, you also hear hardly anything from the engine. You can drive it really calmly, also that you do not annoy your neighbors that much. I think it's also very important that you do it socially acceptable and not only think about yourself. And then if you're maybe in, a, you know, in some surroundings where you do not annoy anyone, then you can hit the exhaust button, either just like this, and you have a little bit more sound, or then also go to the sports modes and so on. Um, about the consumption, well, we go up and down here a little bit, so um, this won't be just, you know, cruise control and driving straight. Um, from earlier tests, you can drive the vehicle with about 10 liters something, um, but it always depends on the throttle control and on the terrain you're driving. I will also tell you at the end of the driving party what we reached here with the sporty approach, because that one will definitely be higher. So, normal driving mode, already sporty, but engine rather silent. However, um, there is, of course, a difference. Wow, nice. <laughs> this was a dr normal driving mode, and there was just a small slick spot on the road, and the rear was already coming a little bit around. But the thing is, when this car here breaks out in the rear a little bit, it's so great to catch it. You have this perfect weight balance due to the midship engine concept. Oh, some small birds here on the road. Please pay respect to our small companions. So this car is so well to handle. I think it's the perfect sports car. Even way better than the 911. The 911 with too much weight on the rear. This one here has the perfect balance. And I think to me it's one of the most fun cars there is and also one of those that are best to control as a sports vehicle. So even in a normal mode, and I mean those are the perfect winding roads in all for the GTS, even in a normal mode a sporty layout definitely already. But what about the sports mode? Well, when I go into the sports mode the exhaust is activated, the additional valve, so when I go off the throttle, we suddenly hear this blop blop, and also when we shift, for example, 7-speed PDK, what a seamless transmission, and when you just leave it as it is, you probably don't even hear the shifting process, but then when you have it in sports mode, the shifting process is, you know, much more noticeable, and you can always use the pedals here at the steering wheel. So, and by the way, the sound will be best in Sport mode, not in Sport Plus. The Sport Plus mode is really optimized for the maximum sportiness. ESP, the electronic stability control, is even drawn a little bit further back. So the Sport mode, if you want to have a little bit more electronic help, and if you want to hear more from the exhaust at the same time, and if you want to have the gears turned up a little bit higher. So, with the sport mode, it's usually at least one gear lower from the automatic transmission. So the gears are turned up then later and shifted down earlier again. And when I use the throttle a little bit more, I can also do a little bit more with the rear, for example. Um, but for normal road driving, I would really just recommend the normal driving mode. It's already sporty enough, especially here with the GTS models. Um, I mean, it's only 15 horsepower or more if you compare it to the S model. So this difference is not that huge. Um, a noticeable difference is when you compare the, the, uh, the base model. And well, that was a small horse chained at the side of the road. Who does that? Can't understand such things. So back to the vehicle. Um, so I think the big difference is when you have the base model and the GTS then now. Because you have the displacement figure difference like 2 liters to 2.5 liters. And so I feel that from the base model here the GTS also comes a little bit better from the lower RPM regions. 
and of course this also comes due to the turbo so if you compare it to the former very beloved natural aspirated engines in the Boxster well they were better because in real reality terms they consumed a little bit less fuel to me I think I had one that's got like eight and nine liters on one kilometers um, but then again performance wise the turbo is of course better um, you don't have to shift that much it's more comfortable to drive you can then just even when you're in a high IP and at lower speeds gently push the throttle and it's already coming very fastly so that's a really great performance then from the turbo and this is also the reason why the GTS here is so on the one hand relaxing to drive if you really want it but also has always so much performance so if you just think in performance terms mm, you would not really miss two cylinders more because this small engine really feels like it would have so much more here by the way now in this in the city I can go back to the normal driving mode make it a little bit more silent don't annoy too much people also relax a little bit for myself because when you hear that um, exhaust you always feel like you know push it push it push it and of course inside the city that's maybe not the best incentive then it's better than something for the countryside road which we are coming soon to again so very beautiful roads here on the way from Mabea to Ronda in southern Spain I love that really just always watch out because those are also pretty well-known car testing tracks the police uh, does do controls here quite frequently and which is maybe also not that bad uh, let's see we've got left or things just straight here um, because you know there are always some people who, who want to exaggerate it you know we all want to have fun but we can also keep it to certain limits to limit that it's safe still for everyone because we maybe want to enjoy sporty open top riding even tomorrow and maybe even in 10 years not only today wow it is really so much fun to steer this box the gts around here and the gts is a really great choice if you don't have to think about the money that much um, other than that i have to say also driving wise yes it does have a little bit more power than the base model but if you want to save some money and want to rather have a cheap porsche it's never going to be cheap at all of course but you know cheaper because there's you know, 45,000 euros for the base model for example in Germany and 78 so almost 80,000 for the GTS you will still save a lot of money and a base 718 Boxster or Cayman will also do just fine so I really love all the sort of a purest Porsche you know base model 718 maybe put one or two features in in which you really appreciate just from a single option list and then that's it and you'll be totally fine with the car because this one is really a car you can also drive in the purest way but then the GTS models also with the frequent Alcantara use also nice for longer driving it's a little bit stickier in the seat you don't slide on it too much great grip on the steering wheel it doesn't get too hot on the seat also that's very important so let's turn it up to the sport mode again wind features by the way um, I mean it's a summer convertible you have to be aware of that so I'm driving 70 kilometers an hour at the moment and the wind does come in here quite heavily already um, I mean we can put up the right window to reduce it a little bit we had it oh this one we we have um, higher because we have the camera on it now when you close the right window as well got a little bit of wind reduction right there there's this integrated wind deflector behind me just the plastic one and that one is reducing the turbulence also just a little bit you know but it shouldn't be too cold um, the better all-season convertibles are usually those compact or mid-size 
convertibles that are based on normal cars like you know, an Audi A3 convertible, Audi A5 convertible, you may see a C-Class convertible, BMW 4 Series convertible. Those ones are rather the all-season convertibles which you can drive like when you put all the windows up, 120 kilometers on the motorway even. That's not quite it with the Boxstar here. Um, here again at 70 kilometers an hour with the windows raised is quite okay still. I mean, but it's also 20 degrees outside, so if it's colder, maybe not the best choice. Again, more the summer driving fun. Now a little bit more speed, and well, so far I was not really hammering the throttle, but up and down and stuff, and consumption is about 12 liters on one kilometer. Considering the low weight of the car, that's really a lot. And it is maybe also due to the new turbo, I don't know. But it's really too much from consumption, even if you think about that in sports cars, it's maybe not the you know, most relevant point for some customers. But again, it could always be better. So, straight line now. Um, we can also show you a very nice acceleration, maybe even up the hill. It's a little bit going uphill now. Uh, if you go into a Sports Plus, for example, so brace yourself and Sports Plus, having the brakes. And that's one on a 10. So, Sport Plus, hemming the brakes, hemming the throttle, the launch control was activated. Wow. Did anyone count the seconds, how much we took? What I was wondering is, maybe because we had some wheel spin? It was a little strange sound from the from the engine, like maybe spin, I'm, I'm not exactly sure. Or with shifting, because I let the car just do all the shifting itself. And of course it was a little bit uphill, so we surely didn't score like the best figure ever. But of course, really impressive how that car got that traction to the ground. It's just rear wheel drive, of course. And great acceleration. And as the car, there again the weight plays a role. Because the car is not that heavy, um, it doesn't put so much pressure on your body. If you have a really heavy car, and you put so much acceleration in it, it doesn't feel as comfortable as being in a lighter sports vehicle. So, now again to the sport mode, where we have a little bit, little bit more sound, and a little bit more control over the rear of the vehicle, and again, wow. It really feels like being in a computer game with this vehicle, and it's also, you know, Maybe even more fun. <laughs> On top of that, the white villages around here, south of southern Spain, you can see them in the distance. Always nice to see. As long as you keep the speed rather steady, it drives like being on the rails. Also to the torque vectoring, that is also included in the GTS package. So torque vectoring means that the speed of each wheel is also adjusted um, in the corners that basically the car is pulled into a corner. For example, when you decrease the speed of the inner wheels and increase the speed of the outer wheels, then also, you know, the, the different speeds of the wheels really pull the vehicle inside the corner even better. So a lot of technology, of course, involved. Now just running straight. Hmm. 20 kilometers an hour speed limit here. Seriously. Okay, if we were like really do that now, that would be this. Really? I mean, <laughs> I, I, I'm really you now saying people should not speed and should not drive too fast. kilometers an hour in this corner. Well, maybe someone flew off that ridge here and went right into that fence once and then they saw it. Hmm. Let's take some precautions. I think, I think it's not even possible to drive 20 kilometers an hour in a Porsche Boxster GTS, is it? 
really. <laughs> we had that also with the um, Mercedes AMG GDC in uh, you know, around Phoenix, Arizona. We were 25 miles per hour speed limit, which is like I think like 40 kilometers an hour, like this now. And that was like, what? So I think we always have to find a good mix between you. Some in Germany, the speed limits are really too high. Even if you drive fast yourself, if you want to drive fast yourself, you always have to think about, you know, for the bigger picture, it might be better different than you think on your own. Yeah. But so I guess we have cleared this corner now, then we can drive a little bit faster again, because that's again something from the characteristics of this vehicle. It behaves so extremely well in the corners that you hardly can feel the speed. So you have to watch out that you don't hit the speed cameras for sure. Wow. So this is really such a perfect combination of open top riding. Again, I think I would just leave it with the base seats, but I did not get back pain yet. And from those bucket seats, considering they are bucket seats, they are still quite okay. Because, you know, they're also that upright that they also catch some of the weight of your upper back here at the shoulder area. And then it reduces the stress you put on your lower lumbar area. That might be the reason why they are still quite okay to drive. Let's talk a little bit about the shifting pedals here. As you can always induce the manual shift right here, shifting up. And when you hold those just for a few seconds, then you can let the car go back to the D mode again. It should, because it's always with the dual clutch. Well, why isn't it doing it? Let's see. Okay, first of all, now shifting back myself. Now I shift up and hold. Let's see. When I reduce speed now, if the car is also shifting down, because at some point, yeah, it's also doing that. But it seems like that's really interesting. You can either put the shifting stick here and shift manual like this, or I can use the pedals. But what I didn't know is usually when you hold the right pedal in every dual clutch transmission car from the Volkswagen AG, then you can get it to the D mode again. But here, obviously, you have to go with the shifting stick into D mode again. And then you ride back there. Hmm, I'm not sure why they haven't um, gone for, for this feature here. So if you decide to stick to the speed limit, then you're also overtaken. That's life, even in a Porsche 718 Boxster. So let me tell you something more about the, you know, the handling features here in the sport mode again. Again, as soon as you apply the throttle, that's basically when it makes the most difference because, you know, in those normal driving modes, when I put the throttle a little bit harder, then also the electronic helpers will get me a little bit straighter in line. Even if I, for example, shift back myself, I go on the throttle and nothing is happening at the rear, not so much, only when it's really slippery on the ground. But when I'm in a sport mode, then let's see, apply some, yeah, then I, you know, at the, at the outgoing of the corner, I feel I can play a little bit with the rear. Then it just slide a little bit there. No, it's not really overtaking me and you don't have to do burnouts on public roads and stuff, but it just gives you a little bit more flexibility when the road is dry, of course. When it's wet, I would always recommend the normal mode, unless you have, you know, free parking lot or something like that, or a racetrack uh, where you can really play around without, without hurting others. So I think good to use the sport mode then, for example, here in this areas. Sport Plus would be rather really for the racetrack that you have a little bit more flexibility in where it's possible. Um, again, it doesn't make the sound better. It just makes it a little bit more extreme, the whole driving experience. And again, the stability control is drawn back a little bit further. We can also drive a little bit with that one here then. 
even with this great handling bag and wow. So this is really a driving part to enjoy all the time. I think it could even be enjoyable if I just drive the vehicle all the time without talking in at all. And maybe we should do that at the uh, closing stages. I'll go back to the sport mode again because that's best for sound. And it's also not that extreme from the shifting ratios. And I just leave you a little bit with the car in those nice corners just to enjoy the driving experience with the Boxer GTS. And now we are switching to the closed top with the 718 Cayman GTS here in the Thomas Blue color. At Porsche they call it Sapphire Blue. Probably my most favorite color for a vehicle of all time. And also one, maybe you prefer that one here. This is this chalk color, this chalk gray, which we also had on the Panamera once already. And I would like to know from you, do you prefer the Boxster or the Cayman? design-wise and, you know, driving-wise, because to me, you know, uh, this is, ah, it looks, looks so great design-wise, but then again, open-top driving, ah, so <laughs> a little, little mixed feeling about that. Tell me your comments and let's enjoy some more design shots of those two here, that you can see the difference all to the Boxster. And also here inside, we got the bucket seats and the sports seats, the normal sports seats here, and we can directly compare with the seating test. So the interior of the box and the Cayman is basically the same. Just again, you know, the difference with the roof. And well, those ones here are the bucket seats again. Again, a lot of shoulder support. Seat is very slim. And again, well, I don't think it's the most comfortable on the long-term run, but four bucket seats is one of the most comfortable bucket seats I had so far. And headroom here in the Cayman, I'm one meters 86 or six with one, still have left uh, some some room here left over my head so it's actually no problem to drive a Cayman or Boxster also as a rather tall person. And also interesting another decor element right here as we have this carbon fiber style in our main vehicle for today the Boxster. Here we have this I would say it looks like dark wood or what would you say? What would you say? Ha 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 nice one right? And now you can see the difference is not that many uh, parts where there's you know, so much shoulder support than with the bucket seat, but as this one here, the standard GTS seat, um, is already the sport seat. So again, the base seat would be even straighter. The options you can get for this super sport seat here is that you can have different electric controls. You know, the more you go high, the more electric controls you have. And indeed, you can also change the back part and the seat is a little bit more open compared to the bucket seats and especially here the head restraint area is thicker so it's easier to put your head against the head restraint whereas with the bucket seat even though it's quite upright I'm 
always sitting like this and here I can really adjust it in a way I can also have you know some you know, rest my head on the head restraint as it's <laughs> maybe also meant to be so I have the feeling um, that it's a little bit more comfortable so I think I would stay with that unless you're often using it on a racetrack however here you can also put the you know the lower part a little bit longer you can um, change this um, you know, the lower side bolsters the upper side bolsters will also be possible to make it a little bit tighter so you can also set this one here up in a way that it would be more suitable for the racetrack that's where we're going right now So guys, now we've jumped in the Cayman for the racetrack and we'll have some hot laps here on the circuit. In Ascari is not the whole circuit today. We've shown you that one in some other reviews already uh, because several teams are filming. We'll have just a part, but the most fun part actually <laughs> of the circuit. And of course we'll hammer that one here. The difference came in and Boxster is really only noticeable on the racetrack when you really have more G-forces applied and the stiffness of the whole body really counts. On the normal street you won't really feel the difference. Here in the sport mode you've maybe also seen it. I can throw the rear just a little bit around and in general this is also one characteristic of the GTS. So, where you see the base model especially and even the S a little bit more stable from the setup in the rear and the GTS lets you play a little bit more. So this is also one thing. That was 160 kilometers an hour. So one thing I would recommend that the GTS is rather for the more experienced professional. No straight. And maybe if you are joining the 718 club, compression here now, the chicane. So when you're joining the 718 club, maybe start with the base model or maximum the S. So, there's a nice corner here when you're going down. Look at the precision again from the steering wheel input to, the, to what happens on the racetrack. Of course, you also hear that this vehicle gets really loud when it's getting pushed on the racetrack. So, you have this pure sports feeling of stableness on the road. and how well it is to handle right here. And this gives me also a feeling of safety, even at high speeds, and such a vast difference to driving an M5, for example. So if you compare it with bigger cars, because you, know, you cannot really compare this car to an M5, of course, I'm just saying because I've recently driven an M5 on the racetrack, this review will also be soon out of fuel. And this one here is, you exactly know, wow. I mean, seeing the luck with 150 kilometers an hour in the corner and centimeter wise, you can precisely control where you want to have the car. Of course, you know, I've been to a lot of different racetracks in the world. In the world have some experience there, not as much as uh, you know, a full instructor or something. But I can really say when a car handles very well and this is again on the race track I think it proves again this is the benchmark in handling. Wow. So great. And at the same time, you know, this, this again also gives, gives somehow safety, you know, when you're really sure yourself what you're doing, so 100% in control all the time. And even if I do, you know, and sometimes you maybe make a mistake or so, but with this guy you can still correct it. 
So when you're listening to that sound and also hear and see what the car is doing, what speeds we are actually at, you wouldn't guess that this is a four cylinder. Great grip also on this asphalt surface here. And especially when you're not a professional race driver with the PDK, also very well balanced. Seven speed. Of course, when in a sport mode, you hear the shifting transitions. This off camera turn, you get squeezed a little bit outside. And very important that you can keep your hands at the steering wheel all the time especially when you have the automatic gearbox. So professional race drivers also handle to shift while that, of course. And then again, if you think performance-wise, the PDK also does it faster. So you don't have to rely on manual to be faster, for example. Meanwhile, the automatic gearboxes are actually also faster. 10 millimeter lower sport suspension also keeps us quite straight. Shifting up is, by the way, with the automatic gearbox on about 7,200, 7,300, the car shifts up. I mean, imagine how, how fast it is when something spins 7,300 times a minute. <laughs> yeah, and of course, I mean, next to very, um, Know, cheap racing arrangements, for example, like a Mazda MX-5, which you know a lot of hobby racing drivers uh, choose then at their vehicle on the racetrack. This one here would be also one you can easily go on the racetrack. And as it also has this low weight, it doesn't apply so much pressure on your body like you would have with a very very huge car. Of course, also at higher speeds, the Cayman is a little bit more silent than the Boxster, but the soft top roof also makes it rather silent. Um, you know, the Boxster is still okay at higher speeds. You will, again, only notice it when you're in Germany, for example, where you have those really, really high autobahn speeds. So, I would say, what a flawless performance here from the 780 Cayman. Wow, really nice to enjoy. And we'll have one more cooling down lap here to get the engine settled again, temperature wise. So it's not good when you, you know, just abandon the car, turn it off and stuff. So running one lap then, a little bit lower speed, then the coolant, work, and so on. So, I hope you enjoyed this ride. And now to our conclusion, Porsche 718 Boxster and Cayman for today in the GTS version, the new one that is now available. Well, I mean, it is slightly a horsepower upgrade if you compare it to the S version. It's not the big difference, it's just a you know, minor noticeable. Of course, a bigger difference than from the base model to the GTS models. Overall, I think the 780 models are also cars that can be bought just as a pure base trim. They are basically also made for it to have the puristic Porsche driving experience. If you want to spend a little bit more money, if you want to go for a high spec of the Boxster or the Cayman, then the GTS are of course always the great choice. They have a little bit more, you know, more evil uh, spice in the look. And of course a plentiful use of Alcantara on the interior which is sporty and also more sustainable. Of course, in the base models, you can also have different kinds of seating choices. Again, three seat forms 
and also in the base molds you can also get Alcantara if you want to have such thing and also a fabric surface is available. So great models for, ex uh, for sure and of course the driving experience that's what all of this vehicle is about and even step up further in the GTS. It's so much fun to drive this car, it's a perfectly balanced sports car to me probably the best sports car that is out there at the moment. The Cayman, well, you notice the difference maybe on the racetrack because it's a little bit stiffer from the closed top. Other than that, for normal road driving, you won't really um, you know, notice the difference. Then, of course, to me, it would always be the box star to enjoy the open top riding. Although I liked it, the Cayman better from design. I think the Coupe always looks better than the convertible. And of course, nothing beats open top auto fuel car feeling thank you so much for watching tune into our next episode as well and give us feedback about the gts models for today thank you